incompetent. Senator Rice, you another question? I, just, I wanted to go back to Senator Xenophon's question about the interaction of one sky being introduced and the fact that there are no plans to increase the amount of controlled airspace. Yep. I mean, what you've outlined is we've got ADSB expensive being imposed upon general aviation to no benefit because they're all flying in uncontrolled airspace, but yep. there's no plans to increase the amount of, of controlled airspace. And by the way, there is a plan called NAS. It's, it was in a plan approved by a committee which Sir Angus Houston and myself was on. Um, it was policy under Mark Vale, but what, seems what year? to... What year was this? Uh, 2006, I think it was. Anyway, right. when Mark Vale was the minister responsible, uh, it, that suddenly disappeared from the policy. Right. So, and, and, and so there's no policy at the moment to put any controlled airspace in. And that's why, even though there's been some extraordinary publicity in the Australian newspaper, uh, they actually announced they were going to increase the controlled airspace from 8,500 feet down to 6,500. Well, that's actually going to reduce safety because you then have less time to self-separate, to become your own air traffic controller. Mm -hmm. And it's just complete madness, and it's all because air services is so um, lacking in leadership to have someone say, this is ridiculous. If the America does it at every airport, let's us do it at one airport. Mm -hmm. I want class controlled airspace operating from the Brisbane centre to be trialled at, at um, Ballina Airport. How long will it take us to do it? And they take six months at least to sort out the maps and six months to train the controllers. Okay, 12 months time, we're gonna put in a trial for 12 months. In 20, over 20 years, that hasn't happened. There hasn't been one person who said, let's move forward from the 1930s. Mr so, Smith, so just on that... Could I just uh, clarify, sorry, go, just go on. finishing on it. So, so basically what you're saying is, it, for all of the reasons that you've been discussing, it would be desirable to have more controlled airspace, but One Sky is inconsistent, or there are problems with One Sky as it's being rolled out with those, with if we went down the track of having more controlled airspace. A absolutely. There are other problems with One Sky, and the, the other problem I see with One Sky, and if I can just read this out to you, most importantly, it seems as if a combined air traffic control system won't be able to reconcile the completely different missions of two organisations, i.e. the strategic planning and orderly flow of civil traffic, maximising flight efficiency supported by a comprehensive flight data process, via the tactical and largely unplanned nature of military operations. Now, I do have a problem that one sky could be another super sea sprite disaster. And the super sea sprite disaster, which was effectively covered up uh, because I, I don't know why it was covered up, but $1.4 billion of our money was just lost, could have bought a number of hospitals. And what happened there was the military decided to get this special helicopter made that was different to the rest of the world. Yes, and it's it, a complete disaster. Add. And it was a complete disaster. But, 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 then, but then it was fixed up by the Americans and they sold it the Kiwis for a complete bargain, correct? Yeah. No, it was never fixed up and it was. I think the Kiwis have got some of the helicopters as spares or something. Oh, Just okay. getting back to air services, yep. Mr Smith, the, 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 these fire, fire stations and, and air traffic control, are they controlled by CAS or air services? Air services. They, they're responsible for the... Absolutely. They make the decision about the fire trucks, how many, when they go in, what model, and how many staff... Uh, uh, they're completely employed. You go to Air's Rock... They, they have the complete say in that. Absolutely. Oh, no, yeah. no. The Civil Aviation Safety Authority sets the criteria right. that says a certain number of passengers or movements you need to put in a fire service. Uh, so CASA sets that fire service regulation. Right. And, but air services have the monopoly in Australia. Yeah, but what so, I'm saying is CASA makes the rule. Yep. It says Ballina has 62 moves a day, so many passengers, therefore you've got to have 17 fireys and five fire trucks. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, so CASA set that. Yeah. And that rule is clearly... It's probably a rule that came in with Avgas-powered aeroplanes when planes all burst into flames. Right. Another we, quick question, because yeah. time's running out, um, and it's, it's slipping my mind. Yeah. Have you met with Mr Skidmore? Yes, definitely. Because I'm very impressed that man. He, is, uh, he came to Armidale, <laughs> addressed the Armidale Aero Club at my request, when he's not long into the job, came into my office, and his goal is to have more people flying. Right. So. You, were you received well by him? Did he listen to your ideas about the policy? You want more people flying, he wants more I want more, more people, people flying. flying. By the way, and you might think that's the opposite to why would you want more controlled airspace. If putting in controlled airspace means more air traffic controllers and high costs, I don't want that. 
but I really believe we can have controlled airspace at most of these busy country airports without any extra costs. Well, where do we get the savings? Because so, I mean, if we're going to put air traffic controllers into uh, you know, seven days a week into, say, Bathurst or Orange or, yeah, no, or, or Dubbo. I, let me explain to you, you're not putting controllers in a tower. Right. You're using the existing controllers which do the en route airspace yep. to also do approach work, right. which is what happens in other countries. Makes so in Australia, if you got to Bathurst, the controller has to say, uh, traffic is, and he gives all this traffic, yep. and then you become your own air traffic controller. In the international system, the controller would tell you what to do, and it is the en route controller. We've never done that. Right. In the history of Australia, we've never used an en route controller who's doing the traffic flying along en route yep. to do approach work, and that's what we've got to do. you got uh, quest questions, Joe? I'll be very quick. Yeah. Okay, okay. Senator Bullock. Uh, thank you, Mr Smith, for the enormous amount of information, yes. the proportion of which I've actually understood. Uh, and certainly I've taken on board the uh, regulation impact statement. I think that that 2009 statement is something we should suggest Thank you. be reviewed. Uh, I'm not going to delay by asking a question, but for the sake of, of uh, disclosure, I need to put on the record the fact that we have the, the union of which I'm president has a significant number of members in the retailer that bears your name. Oh, wonderful. Right, yeah. Well, thank you. I didn't know that. <laughs> and as you probably know, Dick Smith Electronics, I sold it about Sometime 35 ago. years ago, but I'm very proud that it's still Aussie owned and it does a turnover of $1.4 billion, a little business that my wife and myself started with $610 in 1969, only in Australia. And that's what, by the way, why I think I need to spend a lot of my time at the moment in trying to get these important reforms well, on finished. Issue. I'll put the question, how much do the Dick Smith cells ma is actually made in Australia now? Probably very, very little. Very few, because my belief because has always been... Because has all come from overseas. Oh, no, my, my view is that you always sell the best, and the best electronics are made in my day, it was in Japan. Yeah. Best watch is Switzerland. Just so happens that our Aussie farmers grow the best food. Do we ever? And so that's why I support <laughs> Aussie farmers with food. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> I'm going to ask you one question for the opening statement, and then we're going to have to wind it up. Yeah. Why did you not get not complete the reforms you said when you kicked off in the yes, 1990s? Exactly. What happened there? Because I completed my term and as, as chairman the of the Civil Chairman's Aviation Chairman. Authority and naively thought everyone is so enthusiastic and so supportive, but I didn't understand a bureaucracy. See, in my businesses, when people work for me, they never they just would stand up and say if they didn't agree with me. But what happened when I finished my term uh, at the Civil Aviation Authority, I found that within months they started to either stop the reforms or reverse them. Yeah, and of, yeah, ever since of. then, there's never been a move forward with these mm. reforms because it is hard work to bring in change mm. and they'll be in the newspapers every day with people criticising them. Whereas, and, and that's the difficulty. And normally what happens in aviation, there's a message here is, these changes are made when you have accidents. It would be great to actually bring the change in before you we had have the accident. You had some problems too with the CO at the time, didn't you, and the board when it came no, to... No, 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 because I, that, was, that came after me. Right. Uh, Frank Baldwin was the New Zealander we brought in. And uh, if you remember, Mr. there was the Mr. tax Mr. contract. Mr Toller, so. didn't you call a Sunday meeting or something to have... Oh, yes, that's... Have him dismissed and the when I was board back voted the, for him and not you? When I was back at the Civil Aviation Safety Authority, yeah. um, I'd, I'd put Mick Toller on. Within six months, we realised he wasn't going to do any reform, so I said he should go. But the minister said, no, he can't go. The minister or the board? The minister. Yeah, anyway, and that's that, all history. The main anyway, thing it's is, all history, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> the main thing is um, affordable flying and safety. And air services, inquiry air services, doing their job to their efficiency. And, and do you mind if I just, Please Senator, if I just on. finish this bit I was saying about the One Skies policy? The One Sky has somehow got off track because what Sir Angus Houston said in a document in 2002 was, he said, Australia simply cannot justify, sustain or afford to continue operating two almost identical air traffic management systems. Now, at that time, I think Alan Hawke was the head of the Defence Department, and it was decided that instead of having separate air traffic controllers in the military, that they should come over and be with air services, because we're a very small country, 
and to train enough people, you only have to look, the ATSB has shown there are quite a few safety incidents at the military controlled airports. Darwin Airport has 95% civilian traffic, but it's run by the military. Somehow that's got changed, in other words, bringing the air traffic controllers into air services. It's got changed to buying a radar system that will do both jobs. And my gut feeling and advice I've received is that no one has ever done that in the world. This is the one sky military and civilian. And people have pointed out, Dick, it would be similar to Tony Abbott saying, I need to get the new VIP fleet, but we won't buy it from Boeing or Airbus. We're going to get something made that will have rockets underneath the wings, so it's a combined aircraft. And you would just say, that is ridiculous. You want to buy something proven. So you're saying the one space proposed is ridiculous? I'm is saying that people are saying that it won't work to try and buy a combined system. It will be like the Super Sea Sprite. I don't know enough about it because it's so incredibly complex, but we don't want to find that we've given these blokes who are competent people a job which they say in five years' time, well, look, we told people that to try and b make an air traffic control system operate military traffic, where you want to identify completely non-planned flights, and also operate civilian traffic at the same time is not really possible. Mm. And I, I, th that's what worries me. I would have thought it would be better to keep the civilian air traffic control system as a civilian system. And time will tell if they can get, get it to work. Let's hope they can. Well, Mr Smith, at that we have to wind it up.